hello, hello. We're so excited to be back again with the Flow Show. Hey, Christina. Hey, Yolanda Shields. So excited to be a part of the Flow Show. It's episode number four. Where has the time gone? I know it doesn't even seem like it, but we're, I'm excited about what we're going to talk about today. And I want to ask you, those that are already on and watching, invite your friends. Uh, start inviting them so they can come and enjoy it and get as, as much as you're going to get out of it. Also, you can also watch later. Those that are going to watch later, uh, we're excited about you watching us later as well. And at the end, we'll tell you how you can continue to follow us until the next one. So, Christina, why don't you tell everybody what we're going to be discussing today? I'm excited about it. Absolutely. As I get ready to tell them what it is, I also want to remind them that we want to take your comments and your aha moments in real time. Yolanda has this like really cool way that she can pull them up on the screen so we can both see it. So yeah. feel free to post those below. Whether you're watching this live or on the replay, Yolanda and I actually check all the comments. We reply, we engage with you, we pray with you. So we're just really excited to kick off this show. If it is your first time watching the Flow Show, let us just tell you what flow even stands for because there's a lot of names a lot of words that we could have used to pick the show but flow stands for faith filled leaders offering wisdom so if that's you whether you're here as a, a also a faith filled leader or you're someone that is looking for wisdom from some other faith filled leaders then you are in the right place and we're excited to have you here today so episode 4's topic is called divine shift Ooh, so I know. I'm excited. That's exactly right. <laughs> yes. I don't know about you, but since 2018 kicked off and I've been praying and I've been doing the things, kind of practicing really what we've been preaching on this show, I have felt a divine shift, a peace come over my life. But I've also definitely noticed some things that are different, some changes that have happened. And so I know in this show, we're going to just dive into that head first. So I'm a big believer in just like laying the foundation before we build anything on top of it. So let's let's pull out our dictionaries. Gosh, I feel like we're in college all over again. <laughs> do that because sometimes yeah. we know what something means, but we really don't, or we've forgotten. So that's that's excellent, Christina. Yes. Yeah. So you know, if you've got a Bible nearby, a notebook nearby, or a dictionary nearby, we're gonna dig in. So here's the first one. I'm gonna do the work for you. So a divine shift is the providence or the care of God to prepare you for the future with a slight change in position or direction. I'm gonna say it again. Divine shift is the providence or the care of God to prepare you for the future with a slight change in position or direction. Now let's let's break that down a little bit more. Would you like me to do that, Yolanda? Yes, please. Okay, so divine actually refers to the providence of God. Now, for those of you that are not like sitting up on Google all day long, checking up definitions of words, unlike me, because I'm a words person, uh, providence actually refers to the protective care of God or, um, a, you know, the, the spiritual realm, if you will. So the protective care of God. Um, and it typically talks about timely preparation for a future eventuality. And I was like, whoa, wait a second. So there's a God who provides protective care for me to prepare me for my future. Oh, that's pretty awesome. So, yeah. okay, so so in the, the aspect of the word divine, right there, we just, just to go over it, providence, which means protective care of God, timely, yeah. timely preparation for a future eventuality or event, and then a shift, because again, we're talking about a divine shift. It's a slight change or position, direction, or even tendency. And I know, Yolanda, when you and I talked about this, we thought about how, you know, we've we've heard about like a change in position. That makes sense to us. A yeah. change in direction. That makes sense to us. But wow, a change in tendency. We might step on a couple toes with that one. I know. So before I think we we kind of go even deeper about how you can apply this to your life, how this becomes a faith filled wisdom moment that you can practically apply if you're in marketplace ministry, if you work for a nonprofit, if you're a small business owner, you're a mommy blogger, you're a stay-at-home parent, you're a married couple, you're a single person ready to celebrate Valentine's Day with joy, whatever it may be. Um, 
I think we got to talk about some of the divine shifts that you might encounter in the marketplace. So Yolanda, you with your company, Yes Builds, I know you consult people all over the world. So I bet you there's some themes of change that you've seen over the years. Absolutely. And I think uh, a lot of times people think about change and they panic. Yeah. For instance, when you come in on Monday morning to your office and one of your main managers, one of your best selling managers comes in and, and says that he's leaving, and you, you like, what are we going to do? And sometimes wow. you have to shift your mindset and say, okay, I have equipped this person enough that they can go to the next level. Even though it's hard for you to make that shift and, and know that change is coming, sometimes you have to step back and say, how, how have we planned for this? So it makes wow. you plan it in, in, before it happens. Mm think it happened. I tell a lot of my clients, especially in HR and the HR work I'm doing and in small business, what if tomorrow your vice president quits? What's your plan? There you go. That's that timely preparation. Exactly. Timely preparation that you have a backup plan for with anybody who leaves. And I tell them a lot of times, it's, it's that's why it's so good to cross train your team. So this right. move from that position you still have someone that can do those tasks or those assignments until you can get somebody else in that position. Don't get too comfortable and leave that person in that position too long and they have double jobs. <laughs> uh oh. And, and, and one, another one is a, you pastor in a church and lead in a ministry for many years and suddenly your responsibilities change. And we know that don't happen in churches. What, 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 <laughs> Yes. Never, happens, never happens in the in church. church. It happens what? in churches. It happens in small businesses. It happens in nonprofits. And how are you going to respond? How are you going to handle that when that happens? Christina, you had another example that, that we talked about. Do you remember which one that is that you'd like to share? Wow. Let me tell you guys about a divine shift that happened in my life about four years ago tomorrow, Valentine's Day, which is pretty wild, the timing of this and the topic that we're teaching on today. So I remember I had my own business at the time, sheer goodness. It was my full time responsibility, coaching and consulting in the social media world uh, for small business owners and, and quite frankly, even some corporate clients. And I had this big fish corporate client. Like I'm going to just tell y'all it was, you know, like $16,000. It was a nice, nice contract. Yeah. And um, the client called me on Valentine's Day to inform me that they were not going to need my services anymore, not because I did a poor job, but because I completely validated their company's investment at the corporate level in hiring someone else that they would pay with benefits almost triple what I was getting paid. Yeah. Wow. Talk about yeah. a divine shift. And in that same day, I also saw a huge blessing come my way where someone actually blessed me with a ticket to an event I had been praying for that was, you know, also a substantial investment of, of my time and, um, gosh, even like financially to even be able to go. I didn't even, cause now I'm like, have to go to this conference and I just lost my big fish client. And I'm like, well, God's hand is on this. I see it. But at the same time, I'm like kind of panicking, but, in, in retrospect, four months later, I see that God was removing that from my plate, removing that yearly contract, because next thing you know, I was serving in the church more. I was created a role in the church. I went on my first missions trip to Lima, Peru, and literally within six months of that time, my entire life and direction of my life yeah. changed. Everything changed. And I'm so grateful that even though I didn't understand it in the moment, I participated and I went with the divine shift instead of kicking and screaming like a little kid um, because I knew that God's hand was upon it. So that was a huge, huge change for me. <laughs> exactly. And sometimes we don't understand that it's a divine shift that even if you're a pastor or a leader and you're being moved, sometimes you have outgrown that place where you are and God is ready to take you to the next level. And sometimes we fight and kick against that because it is going to take a little bit more of us a lot of times 
if, we, if we're stretching us, God is stretching us to the next level, sometimes it can be a little painful and a little uncomfortable and taking us out of our comfort zone because we can get so comfortable being in a certain place because it's easy. That's good. God it's shifts so good. us. We kind of like, oh, we don't feel, we don't feel good. And then I've had the same thing with contracts. And sometimes I've panicked like, Lord, wait a minute, what are you doing here? What is going on here? But it just freed me up for other opportunities. And so you have to first stop and take a breath, just take a deep breath and say, okay, the Lord is up to something. But because our first response is to panic and not look and see what, what's going to be the benefits of this. We automatically go to, oh, this change is going to disrupt my life and it's not going to be good. But we should take a step back and take a breath and say, okay, how can this be great? Let me see the benefits of this and not the negative that I'm feeling right now in this panic moment. That's good. That's good. You know, it, it makes me think about um, a story I actually heard this weekend from Diana Akers at uh, the Devoted Conference here in Nashville. And she was talking about how when um, a plane is setting its course, right, it's it's going a certain direction, it's on its way to its destination. And if the plane itself um, the is one degree off, just one degree, which seems very small, Yes. A plane that was on its way to Paris ends up in Germany. And I don't know about you, but if I paid a ticket to get to Paris, I want to go to Paris. I don't want to go to Germany. And and I think about God and how much more when he sets a course for our life, he sets and determines a destination for our life. Doesn't he want us to get there? And I feel like sometimes we we might not realize like we're completely off the course. We're just that one degree off where God's like, hold on. Let me just divinely shift you just a little bit. Let me just do that little change in perspective, that change in position or direction to get you where you need to go. And um, I did some research. There's something called the one degree mistake. If anyone wants to like look that up and the aspect, um, let me rephrase that. The kind of the behind the scenes of this, if you will, just a quick takeaway is really for you to just take a moment as we're talking right now and ask yourself, what is your tolerance for being off course? What are those checks and balances you have to make sure you are on course? Because I feel like if you are praying, you're checking in with those people, that important circle of people we talked about in another show that, um, and you're being aligned with his will and you're working with those right people collaborating, you're actually gonna be on course. And you might not need that that even 1% divine shift because you're in his will and you're going the correct direction. But if not, here's the thing. You may have an area in your life or your business where you are missing the mark, where you need to just make that small little shift. Uh Oh, I see Julia Biagi chiming in with some wisdom. Hey, Julia Biagi. What Julia has to say here. Hello, Julia. And uh, who is that else? Cunningham. Um, CJ Cunningham. Hey, CJ. Hey, Keon. Awesome, awesome people in the house. You share this. Weighing long-term benefit versus present emotion emotion helps uh, calibrate the trajectory. See, that's my girl for the divine destination. That's so good. <laughs> you know what? She just had baby number four. Congratulations to you and your husband for having Aria Rose talk about birthing destiny literally and figuratively so she's still bringing us wisdom yeah. while probably holding her little girl over there right now so thanks julia for joining us tonight we're Absolutely. honored to have you. you and one other you know, thing I, that we uh a lot of times I, both of us have traveled internationally uh and in you know domestic flights and there are delays that frustrate you sometime or cancellations. And we, we had a friend that dealt with that. And, and a lot of times what we don't think about is sometimes God is divinely connecting us with someone that we could miss if we got on that flight or wow. situation or uh, um, a, a connection to someone, like I said, that we would never have been in contact with sitting in the waiting area in the airport or going to get a meal at the airport that God can connect us or he can delay it for us to be able to meet someone. You want to talk a little bit about that for just your experience. I experienced that in seeing God Ooh. when I was frustrated about coming back from France and my flight being delayed, but God did some amazing things with the person I sat next to on the flight back on the next flight that I took. 
I think that's a perfect example, Yolanda. I can tell you, I have had so many experiences at the airport. I always love airports because I actually pray and I ask God to sit me next to the right person yes. everywhere I go in the airport. Like, and I have had people cry. I've led people to the Lord. <laughs> I've encouraged them. They've encouraged me. They've given me books. I've given them my book. I yes. mean, I could tell you stories for days, but I think what's most important here is to just recognize that those are those divine shift change of plans moment. So if you're in a situation right now where you're like, you feel like the rug has been pulled out from underneath you, you thought you knew what you were doing, you thought you were following God's will, and then like everything seems to fall apart, and but there's still a peace on it. And I think it's important we clarify too, that when God's shifting something, there's a peace upon it, Absolutely. not like a lot of anxiety and stress and fear. So let's just clarify. There are obviously situations that are not of the Lord, but if it is, um, I like to say, okay, so I am a to-do list person. And so whenever something changes, like I have to really work hard to be a quick start and be adaptable because it's not a natural gift for me. So yes. I automatically in my mind think worst case scenario and I think domino effect. And I think, oh my gosh, this change of plans has a whole chain reaction. Yeah. So your flight's yeah. delayed. Well, that means your transfer flight's delayed. Is your baggage gonna be there? Who's gonna get you home? I've already thought of 20 things that are wrong yeah. before I think about that God is right in this moment. And right. so even as Yolanda was just sharing that earlier, the thing that came to me is that we need to stop looking at the change of plans or that chain reaction of problems. And God want us, wants us to look at the change reaction that's going on in our life. Change, yeah. C-A-N-G-E. So change that chain. Don't be chained to your, your situation so much, your plan so much that you don't see that change reaction that God is causing. And I know, Yolanda, you spent some time and you looked up what change meant. So let's dive into your dictionary now and see what you got there. <laughs> Absolutely. And I want, as, as, I'm, as I'm sharing this, I want you to think about some situations here recently that you've gone to gone through and your response. What was your response when you heard that change coming or you, you noticed something different was going to happen that was, wasn't in your plan? And so when you think about the word change, it's a new or freshly different experience. Whew. Did you hear me? <laughs> it's a new <laughs> or freshly refreshingly different experience. But think okay. about when we think about change, we don't automatically go to that. Mm. We go to the negative because in your past, if you've had a situation to happen and it was a change and you didn't see it as a good thing, you take that forward with you to every time something different happens. And so it's, wow. a, it's a mind shift change that we have to make when we hear the word change or we, we know something different is going to happen. You know, I remember making up my whole life plan and, and knowing what I'm going to do with my life and where I'm going. And, and I look back at old journals of, of my plan that I had laid out, which wasn't a bad plan. Mm. But I'm telling you, the plan that the Lord has had for me has been much better. That's and so good. I'm glad that he took me and switched me around and turned me in a yeah. direction that he wanted me to go in because it was much better. And, and I think sometimes we don't really look at that word change like we should, because if you look at the synonym for change, alteration, modification, revision, mm. amendment, adjustment, wow. adaptation, remodeling. So when we think about those words, even if you're looking at a home and you're doing those things, too, it's making it better. And so wow. we really shift our mind to think about change being taking us to a better place, not necessarily taking us to a bad place. And so, but it is a mind shift change. So I want you to think about that situation that you went through. And when you heard that it was coming, that how you responded next time, I want you to think about some of these words, remodeling, reshaping, rearrangement, Ooh. reordering, re restyling, reworking, instead of thinking, Oh my God, what's going on? <laughs> That's so good. We're going to be in a better place to even move quicker in the direction that the Lord wants us to. And we don't spend time stuck in our fear, 
stuck in our doubt and doubting our gifting because we have reworked our mindset to focus on the positive of where we're going. That's good. That's good. And I think you've nailed down what a reaction is. Like I pulled that one up and it talks about a mode of thinking or even behavior yeah. that is deliberately different from previous modes of thought and behavior. And I think that's really powerful with what you just said, Yolanda. It's not just about like accepting the change, but it's actually changing how you deal with change in such a way that your your mindset has changed and now your behavior your thoughts become actions right so let's make sure that when you look at change in the future your reaction is an appropriate reaction to the change that's so good that's let's see, so, let's so see good. What people are saying here let's see yeah. do we have any? i saw i saw we have sloan in the house hey sloan sloan, sloan said something great don't be chained to the plan, embrace the change. Yes. Come on. Come on, girl. Yes. That's so good. Yes. And and Julia, oh, don't be chained to your reaction. Absolutely. <laughs> we can't yeah. stuck in because sometimes our emotions can have us in places that we have no business being. <laughs> We've allowed that emotion to take us to a, a negative place when where we're needing to be going is a positive place if we can look at it differently. Mm. And so we have to really stop a minute when we see that change happening or a new direction coming. Or, I mean, I had something that happened this week and I had to catch myself before yeah. I went somewhere I had no business going. And so one of the ways that I do that, I have to stop and say, what does this really mean? What is mm. really... What is really going on? And a lot of times, everything's not the devil. <laughs> Say that. Say that. Sometimes God is saying, I love you, my daughter. I see you going <laughs> in a direction you shouldn't be going. So I'm going to shift you. I'm going to make some things. I'm going to interrupt your life so that I can have you aligned with where I'm taking you, even when it feels uncomfortable. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Even when it feels uncomfortable. So you have to stop and 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 take a look at that situation and say, have some of this I've caused? Because sometimes we like to take shortcuts. To ooh, where God, is, where God is going to take us. And we haven't learned the lesson from the place that we should have been. So sometimes he takes us back so that we can get that peace because it, down the road, it's going to end, it's going to help you. God uses everything. He uses everything. That's why he takes us down the path sometimes that he takes us because he understands everything that we experience. We're going to use for where he's taking us. Yeah, that's so good. And you know, <laughs> Julia. <laughs> yeah, God surely didn't call us to Julia's be. Julia's like, oh, you're getting personal now. You're getting personal now. <laughs> and it's true. So, you know what? Let's take it to some scripture because there's nothing more yeah. personal than just. Letting the word just put on a pressure point in your heart. Yes. Second Peter 3, 8, and 9 says, mm -hmm. don't overlook the obvious here, friends, because, you know, God's a friend. Yes. With God, one day as good as a thousand years, a thousand years as a day. God isn't late with his promise as some right. measure laziness. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. He is restraining himself on account of you, holding back the end because he does doesn't want anyone lost. He's giving everyone space and time to change. That's this, so good. Read that again. On. I think you need to read uh, that one more time. <laughs> but, so here's the thing. He's giving everyone space mm -hmm. and time to change. And I, I know I heard a pastor that we both know the other day talk about space and another word that can be interchanged for space. So Yolanda Shields, do you want to just drop that little bomb on them and let them know the other thing that space talks about and how we are just so grateful that God leaves a little bit of something for us to change? Yes. So he leaves grace Whew. for us to change. Come on. Sometimes we don't even use the grace or we or we overuse the grace, but he lead, he gives us grace for change. Leave room for God to reorder your day. That's so good. Leave room for God to reorder your day, to reorder your schedule, to reorder your vision, because he knows best. 
sometimes we're, we're not flexible at all. We just like, this is our plan and we don't want anybody touching it. Sometimes he wants to bring somebody alongside you that has a gifting that you need in order to strengthen where he's taking you. And if you don't have any, you, you don't leave any grace or any room for him to do that, then you're going to miss out. And then yes. being flexible to shift and change when needed. Mm, being that's flexible good. To shift and change when needed. Don't be so rigid that if something needs to change, that you're so rigid that you're not willing to do that. Mm. And and why are people so rigid? Why are they unwilling to change, Yolanda? What is like the root thing here? Because let's get to it. I mean, we're here to set some people free, break off some chains for yeah. change. <laughs> Tell them what, what is the root issue? I think the root issue for me is fear. Woo. And I, fear and lack of faith. Wow. You don't really believe, you know, you know how we there are many a songs out about it, like that, that, that the word is true. We believe in the word, the word is true. But then when it comes to our situation, oh wow, we we allow fear to distract us from believing what the word says already says about us, what the word already promises us, what the word already says, who we are. And what we will do will allow fear and the lack of faith to keep us from moving into what God has called us to move in. That's good. Because when, when any time that your vision is bigger than you, you're not going to have the money to do it. Sorry, you're not. <laughs> and that's, why that's why we need God. That's why we have to walk by faith, not by sight, because it's going to be him that's going to do it. I mean, I've had projects I've worked on. I'm looking at it like, yeah, God going to have to do this. Because yeah. I don't have it. And any time yeah. bigger than us, we know it's from him. And where he he gives a vision, he provides the provision. Mm, we have that's to, so true. I think we take that and we're thinking the money going to fall out of a tree or the resource. It's still going to take you, your hands and your feet and you moving and you making yeah. moves. But if he gives you the vision, he's going to provide the provision. Sometimes it's that he's going to send people to walk alongside you. But if you don't have the vision written and it's not plain, nobody can come and walk with you. Absolutely so we not. do have some work that we have to do so that when change come and when different things happen, that we have the faith to continue to walk in. And even when it's looking funny, even when our money's funny, we you still have to believe the word that God has already placed in you. You know what it is? Okay, I got, I got another one because, you know, I just yes. I love to be easy. So I'm just going to say another one. So you need a change manager yes. in your life. Yes. You need someone to help you manage the change. Walk through the emotions. Make sure you understand the change. Like change management is totally a thing. But you need a change manager. Yes. And God is your chief change manager. He totally is. But I think we also need some people to kind of walk alongside of us in the midst of the change mm -hmm. to kind of say, Hey, is this a, a good thing? Is this a God thing? Which one is it? Is this the course project course correction that we've been praying for? Is this a giant distraction? You know, what is this situation? You know, how is he, how is this shift going to play out at the end? And we Absolutely. don't always know, but we should have a piece about how it's going to play out before we move forward. Exactly. And, and one of the things I told you, I always say that even when I'm working with clients and sitting with individuals doing training, that we have to remember that we move in grace, not perfection. Mm. I'm operating in grace, not perfection. If, if I think I'm, I'm perfect and I, I don't. I don't have any flaws. I, I have everything that I need. Then we miss it. But it's the grace that we operate in and not perfection. Perfection so keeps us really distracted. It's a distraction. That's so, good. That's so good. Yolanda, can I just like sum this up in a sentence and then like just release you to pray over these people and break them free because... I just, I know there's something special that God has for them today. So um, really, so here's the thing. So a divine shift in your life is the heavenly setup. If you would just get up in the midst of the change in yes. your life to see that grace, that space that the Lord has given you. Here's the thing. Don't allow it to take you out, but to take you up. 
God yeah. is taking you up higher. You've been praying for that breakthrough. You've been praying for that promotion. You've been praying for that deep, deep desire of your heart. And sometimes it doesn't look the way that we think it does. But you know what? That divine shift. I promise you, you will have peace over because it will be from the hand of the Father. He's gonna shift you out from where you've been into where you need to go. And most importantly, it's gonna be for a timely preparation of your future. Oh my. So Yolanda, will you just pray and close us out today as we finish yes. up this episode? I'd love for you to do that. Yes. Lord, we thank you, oh God, that you are a change maker, that you change us and you move us into the right places that we need to be in, oh God. And so I pray for everyone that's watching live now. And I pray for those that will watch later, oh God, that even when they're watching, that, that you'll begin to show them those specific things that they need to shift and tweak and change to be lined up with where you're taking them in this season, not last season, not the old wine skin, not the old thing, but the new thing, oh God. So I thank you and I praise you, oh God, that you're changing and you're molding, you're making us when we allow you to, to move us in the direction that we've been called to move in, oh God. We're called to be change makers. Yes. And Lord, we thank you, oh God, that the chains are being broken off of fear and doubt. Yes. yes. Perfectionism, oh God, we pray that those things are being cut off of people so that they can be free to walk in all that you've called them to walk in, oh God. I thank you for large vision. I thank you for the dreamers, oh God. I thank you for those that you have placed big dreams in them, oh God, that they will see that without you, they can't do it, oh God. So we just thank you, oh God, that they'll continue to ask you, what is my next step? And they will begin to write the vision, make it plain so that those that you're sending to walk alongside them, oh God, will be able to come and be that change agent that's helping them to walk in all that you have them walking in, oh God. I thank you and I praise you, oh God, for this time, oh God. I thank you and I praise you, oh God, as people are listening, oh God, that they are being changed to make an impact for the kingdom, oh God. And we thank you and we praise you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, Yolanda, I'm just so delighted that we have finished four episodes together. And for those that are joining us for the first time, we're just grateful. And we want to let you know that we do this once a month. So the Flow Show is going to be back next month, March 13th. It's a Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Central Time. If you're watching live, you can just hop, you know, just click to the top and click on Yolanda's Yes Builds coaching page. Go ahead and click to no be notified during our next live show. Otherwise, go ahead and just put it in your calendar right now because where else do you want to be on a Tuesday night than hanging out with us and the word of God? We're going to bring some more incredible topics your way. If there's anything that's on your heart that you'd love for us to teach on, or maybe you've got a friend that you think is a faith filled um, leader that can offer wisdom. Go ahead and send us a direct message and let us know or comment below. We'd love to have guests on as well. So thank you so much. Have a blessed night, everyone. Have an incredible holiday, Valentine's Day holiday this week. May you just feel showered and blessed in love um, with friends, family, significant others, and even puppy dogs, because I know that's yeah. what I'm doing. So. <laughs> <laughs> and go out and be a change maker. Lord, we thank you Ooh. for this time, and we bless you guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.